Hey guys, and welcome to this special episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia, and I am coming to you as always from Munich in the south of Germany. Today is Thursday, the 30th of April 2020, and I am once, re once again recording on my lunch break. This is a special episode, so if you're watching for the first time, first of all, welcome. I really hope that you enjoy it. And second of all, though, this is not going to be a regular podcast episode, so today I'm not going to show any sort of actual knitting, finished objects, works in progress, yarn, any of that. Today I'm only going to talk about one topic that I've been wanting to talk about for weeks, and that is the topic of knitting needles. So there are two reasons why I have had problems and struggled to record this needle episode. Um, one of them is that I find it really hard to not turn into an advertising channel, so I keep on repeating and it still bears repeating that I am not sponsored by anyone, which means that everything that I ever show you, um, unless I state otherwise, which is very, very rarely, like everything I buy with my own hard-earned money, it's my personal opinions and my experiences with these things, and I'm not rewarded by telling you good things about certain things. That being said, I still find it difficult because I know that quite a lot of you guys watch this stuff and if I keep telling you all the amazing things about one product, it may mean that you go out and buy it. And again, that is not my intention. So I've kind of struggled with that and I haven't really found the answer to that problem yet, but I'm just going to be talking today about my preferred needles and brands and what I use for my knitting and it is just that. I think tools and needles are such a personal thing. It depends on so many factors such as your knitting style, the kind of yarn you like to use, your tension, the kind of, kind of things that you want to knit. So today I'm only going to be focusing on metal needles because that's just what I use 99% of the time. I'm going to be talking about my sock knitting, my sock needles, then needles for shawls, garments, smaller things, all of that, and possibly a small excursion into interchangeable sets. And then I will talk about crochet hooks, which shall be very, very interesting because I don't really know much about crochet. I keep repair, repeating that too. So that's going to be more my experiences that I've found very recently. And I'm of course very interested in those of you who are more experienced crocheters and can maybe give me some feedback on that. So that is one sort of plan of how this is going to go today. As I said, there are two reasons why I have been slacking off and not recording these special episodes. And that is the fact that I have just been so exhausted. Um, I guess I'm just past that stage of the second trimester where you have all the energy and I definitely had that. Um, now I'm feeling fine. I'm just super, super tired all the time, including right now. And I'm also out of breath all the time. So just factor that in. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about that. But anyways, we are here now. So I think we should talk about some needles. You guys, I just recorded the entire needle video and my phone decided to delete all of it except the intro. So man, that really, really sucks. I'm so sorry. Um, I will try to go through all of this again and it will be the first time for you. It will be the second time for me. So who knows? Maybe it will be somewhat more coherent than the first time. <laughs> But it does mean that I will most likely forget what I've already told you. And so I am sorry if that somewhat reflects on the quality of this video. Anyways, um, let us once again start on the topic of my sock needles. So before we get started, maybe a quick rundown of how I tend to knit and how I tend to knit my socks. So I am a continental knitter, which means that I will hold my yarn on the left hand. Um, I also tend to knit a lot of a magic loop. So while I did learn how to knit socks on DPNs and I spent a while doing both, by now I just tend to automatically um, grab my magic loop needles and do magic loop. 
I'm also, um, I think I'm a pretty fast knitter and I like knitting fast, not because you have to be a fast knitter, but because I enjoy it the most. So that is why I prefer metal needles um, that need to be quite slippery and then I can just knit, knit, knit and it works really well. So today I have brought you my two sock needles of choice, which I basically use interchangeably. The first one is um, Haya Haya Sharps. These are Haya Haya um, sock needles. They have the Haya Haya Steels and the Haya Haya Sharps, which are sharper, as the name would suggest. I bought uh, quite a few of these when I first started becoming very crazy about sock knitting. And so I've been using these for years and years. Um, and yeah, they're holding up pretty well. Um, this is the package. Um, this is what they come at as and essentially what I really like about them is the fact that they are very very slippery they're very fast needles um, even the steels are relatively sharp so in terms of the tips I really like both of them and the cable everything is very light so these are very very light needles um, I like them for that reason the one thing that I don't like so much about it, and maybe you can tell just by me playing with these, is the fact that the cord is quite flimsy. So this is a very light cord, it's very very bendy, and again it very much depends on your personal preferences and knitting, uh, knitting style, whether you prefer these like light flimsy cables, or whether you prefer the more substantial cables that I will show you in other needles. Um, I still use them all the time, I almost hit myself in the head there. But I will say that after years and years of using them, they do sometimes get a bit kinky or you can tell maybe um, that the joints, they don't kind of go straight anymore, they, they kind of bend. But again, um, even if I have to replace these after like four years of knitting with them, probably more like five years, considering the amount of knitting I do on those um, they're really good and I still really like them and I would buy them again. It just depends on what you want. So a stark contrast to this needle is my other favorite actually, which is Chow Glue. So this is a Chow Glue red lace needle. And these have similar sort of tips. So they're also relatively sharp. They're also I feel like the differences between these are very, very, very small. I sometimes find the higher highers tend to be a bit more slippery and a bit faster with certain yarns, but really they are not that different. What is different is the cable, so you can maybe already tell here. The Chagu cables, they have a metal core and then sort of this coating around it. So they have a very different feeling. They are much less flimsy. They don't bend and twist in a million different directions at the same time. And so they're just a bit more substantial. And I know that some people hate these and some people love them. I definitely love them. They work well for Magic Loop and basically anything that you could dream of. And in terms of quality, I think Chao just has to be my favorite because I've never had any issues with the quality of their needles. And the join here is just a tiny bit nicer than the Haya Haya's. So yeah. Um, I have a ton of high highs. I have, I don't know, maybe three pairs of the Chagus because they do tend to be a bit more pricey. And again, that obviously depends on where you are and where you are buying these things very much. But I grab these pretty much interchangeably. Um, whatever is on top when I am casting on a new pair of socks, I will grab some of these needles. And yeah, these are my two favorite sock needles. So, what are some needles that I tend to use for garments, for shawls, for accessories that aren't socks? Well, I've basically brought out a variety to show you. Um, where do we start? First up, one brand of needle that I wanted to show you because I quite like it. I don't use it as much as I would like to, but it's one of the needles that I used when I first started knitting. Um, this is actually a needle made by Adi. These are the Adi Premiums. Um, so this is their logo and this is a brand that is made in Germany. So this is basically what you can find if you go into any sort of craft store or anything here. You don't need to go to a fancy place to find these needles. And yeah, these needles I used a lot. Um, the Premiums, I don't like to use them for socks so much because 
I don't know, they just don't really work for socks for me. But they are very light, which I, I don't really know how they do it, but they're very light um, for what they are. They have good tips. Um, they have good joints and again, I like the cable. It's kind of in between the Chagu and the Haya Haya, so it's not super flimsy. It's a bit more substantial, but it's not a heavy feeling at all either. So these worked really well for me when I was knitting a lot of shawls. A lot of lace shawls have been knitted on these. And I think they would actually work for garments relatively well as well. So these are one brand. I sadly don't use them so much anymore, but yeah, they're just a good addition to my needle stash. They come in like a golden and a silver color. I prefer the golden because with the silver, I have experienced that over years and literally years. So over a long time, um, sometimes they have kind of changed colors and gotten a funny smell. Um, and that has never happened with these golden ones. So they are the ones that I would get if I were to buy them again. And again, they're quite a good quality needle. They're made in Germany. They're very affordable and good quality, I think, for the price when you get them here in Germany. Again, it obviously always depends on where you are, which needles make sense for you and which are going to be your go-to needles. Um, the needles that I actually have the most of um, besides sock needles are actually these. These are Knit Pro Zings. Um, I'm sure you know Knit Pro. It's a very well-known big company. Um, and again, I would say that Knit Pro is really good at providing needles for a affordable price. So I really like that these needles seem to be kind of available to anyone and they kind of prove that you don't need to spend a ton of money to do any kind of crafting, which I think is really important. Um, I hear so many people who say, I'm a new knitter and now I need to buy an interchangeable needle set and I need to spend all this money on all these expensive fancy things. And really you don't, you don't need to buy an interchangeable needle set if you don't want one. Um, I didn't have one for years and um, it just kind of depends on what you want to make either. If you are like me and you need a lot of socks and then besides that all the garments that you make or bigger things that you make are on a small variety of needles, you don't really need an interchangeable set. So when I figured that out, um, the fact that I mostly just needed like 3mm, 3.25, 3.5 and maybe 4mm needles for about 90% of my garments, what I did is I decided to get myself a lot of needles from a good source that is somewhat affordable and these are those. So the Knit Pro Zings, they are again metal needles. They come in this fun sort of color range which I really like because it makes it easier to find what needle size you want based on the color. Um, they are quite slick, they are not very sharp so you need to know if you can deal with blunt needles. Again, I don't like using these for socks. But for garments, I actually really quite like them, unless I'm doing something super like cable-y and lacy. Um, sometimes it's good to not have super sharp needles. And I find that these work really well with Magic Loop. They work really well with non wash yarns, so I use them a lot for color work. And again, the cable is very sturdy, so I really like it. You can have a sweater on this, you can have a heavy project on this, and it doesn't go anywhere. So yeah, I have a lot of these um, and I still use these all the time. As I already hinted, I have last year actually started using an interchangeable set. So I used to have a Knit Pro Nova interchangeable set, but I don't really use it. So if you're in Germany and you're wanting one, do let me know. But um, yeah, I had for a long time then just worked with my zings and my fixed circulars and that worked really well until last year I decided to bite the bullet and get myself a new interchangeable set. And if you ever want to get one, my big tip for you would be to try the needles first. Don't go by what anyone tells you is a great needle because again, needles are very, very subjective. So. Try just a spy single needle or like a, a set of needle tips or lend them from someone you know if you have knitters in your friend circle. 
Um, so that's what I did. Um, I actually got myself one of those tiny Chago needles. I already knew that I liked the sock needles. I liked the quality of these. And then last year I got um, the set and I really like these because you can get only the half set. So I mentioned already that I don't use anything basically bigger than a four millimeter needle pretty much ever. So with this set, um, while I do have the whole bag, I only have the top part of the needles and the second half is just empty. So I basically spent half the amount that I would have usually spent and got only the needles that I really need. And so since I, since acquiring this about, I don't know, a bit less than a year ago, I've been using these a ton. I've been using them mostly for garments and I'm really happy with these. And what I do is I use these for obviously like garments, for magic lip, for all of that. And then I actually like using smaller needles when I do small circumference knitting. So I think I've mentioned that I don't like to knit socks on those tiny nine inch circulars. They just freak me out. It's too tight for me. Again, very personal. But I do like to use um, smaller needles for sleeves. And also for like hats and baby knits, like all the things where you kind of don't want to do magic loop. So I have, like I said, this one single Chagu fixed circular that I use for a lot of um, sleeves. This is probably my most used needle because it's in a 3.5 millimeter, which is my most used needle for sweaters. And you can see that the Chagus, they have this bend in there, which is neither here nor there. They work quite well for me, so I use them quite a lot. Um, and when I realized that I did enjoy working my sleeves with these like little zippy needles, I again went for a more affordable version because again, Chagus are not the cheapest to get here in Germany in my um, in my experience. So once again, I went with Knit Pro. These are the Knit Pro Novas, which I think are their sort of most standard metal needles, and I quite like them. So I have a ton of these. I got these on sale for like I don't know, three or four euros each. So again, I'm someone who will you know wait until I find a sale somewhere and then just order these. And I got, the, I got these on basically all the sizes that I use for either garments or hats. So I have them in every size that I need and I can just use these to work on hats, on sleeves, all of that. And again, they work just fine. They're not super fancy. I'm sure there are needles out there that are maybe like 1% higher quality, but generally for my needs, which is just to knit a sleeve, they work just fine and you know me, I like to also kind of use affordable options when I can. So I have a ton of these again flying around in my needle stash and yeah, I quite like them. So last but not least, I want to talk about um, needle storage and crochet hooks. So in terms of needle storage, I know how uh, someone will ask me, how do I store all of my needles? And the answer would be, terribly i store them terribly i have this one like store-bought um like toiletries case back before i had like project bags and fancy stuff and i just throw all of my needles in there it is a mess you guys i did not bring it out to show you because i am ashamed and um, so all i essentially do is i will just kind of you know work these needles into somewhat of a manageable size and then I'll just throw them in that bag and it is a disaster. Um, it works for me because I don't tend to travel with my needles and I kind of know what I have so I will just rummage through until I find what I need and of course I also have my interchangeable set which is in its own place so that already makes stuff easier but I know that there are so many different ways of like storing your needles there are independent makers who are making these beautiful cases but you know me i tend to blow all of my money on yarn and tools rather than like the pretty things that surround the yarn and the tools so one day i need to look into that because i think it would really help me and i think i would have to look into what suits my needs as well but yeah the simple answer is i have a big mess and everything is in one bag and it's it's pretty terrible. 
Um, last but not least, I did want to chat a little bit about crochet hooks, and this is probably going to be the most nerve-wracking part of this episode, because I really don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to crochet hooks. But um, maybe you, can, you guys can give me some input. So until about half a year ago, the crochet hooks that I used were either like metal ones that I got from my grandma or I had, I think, one or two that I got from like the random, most random craft store for like two euros. So no idea where they went, no idea what brand they were. They were pretty terrible. But um, I asked you guys for advice on what's a good sort of affordable crochet hook. And most of you guys told me to get the Clover Amour crochet hook. So this is one of them. I only have one and I got this. I used it on my granny stripe or granny, some kind of granny stripe uh, blanket. And I really like it because it feels like you can crochet quite, quite fast. I'm not sure if it's the coating or the metal or whatever, but it worked really well. And then recently I've been working on different crochet product uh, projects and once again, I went with the cheapest version of what I could get because I had no idea what I was getting anyways. So I got these on a sale. This is, um, I think, a Knit Pro hook. So the difference basically is, besides the fact that it is a different size, is that this one has a flat side and a wide side. And while this one is probably much less fancy than this one, um, I realized that I really enjoy working with needles that are like flat like this. They work really well for my hands and I find crochet quite aggravating on my wrists and hands already. So I actually really like it. And the other day I had, I have actually acquired a couple more because again, they are affordable and I just really like working with these. But the biggest surprise that I had was when I started using this. So this is one of those fancy crochet hooks. Um, they're probably not fancy if you're used to really good crochet hooks, but for me, this seems kind of fancy. It's one of those ergonomical ones. It's by Adi. I think that it may be Adi Swings, but don't quote me on that. And as you can see, it has like all these fancy shapes and materials. And I think this is supposed to be really good for crochet. Um, and I hated it. Uh, I will say it may also have to do with the fact that this is a 5mm needle, so it is a quite large crochet hook. But the way that I crochet, I tend to somehow hold my hand very, very close to the tip. And that didn't work with this, and I just felt like ugh, it wasn't working at all. So I thought that was so interesting, and I actually, I got this by mistake. So I had placed an order from, I don't know, either Love Knitting, Love Crafts, Hobby, one of those big sort of places and this, this was a while ago and this just showed up and I messaged them and said look I didn't order this do you want me to send it back and they said oh just keep it so I kept it until I started using it last week and I just thought it was so interesting that I could not deal with this so again I'm sure um, there is a right way of crocheting and I'm probably maybe holding my needle wrong and Again, it must be at least as individual and subjective as knitting needles are, but I just thought that was so interesting. So I'm very curious um, about you crocheters, those of you who know what they're doing, unlike me, what are your sort of favorite crochet hooks that are in the affordable range? I don't mean like the fancy handcrafted wooden, I don't know, crochet hooks, but in terms of like beginner friendly crochet hooks, what are your favorites? I would really like to know. So help me out and help me improve my crochet, please. So this is it for today's needle episode. And I'm sorry, there were many, many cuts and there were many mental breakdowns on my part, which I have edited out because there is something wrong with my um, phone today and it is not recording right. And that meant that I have recorded some of these segments multiple times and that's why I'm also kind of starting and stopping because I just cannot take one more time when I record a big chunk of video and then it is gone. So I will have to figure that out and if this has made this whole episode a bit less coherent then I'm very sorry but I still really really hope that this was somewhat interesting to you. Again, please be reminded that I'm not telling you 
to buy anything or what is right or what is wrong. These are just my personal experience from working with all of these tools. So I, of course, would really like to hear your thoughts and your experiences. And yeah, I just really hope that you found this either helpful or maybe just entertaining because I was losing my mind while recording this. This is not good. I am going to make myself the biggest cup of coffee today and yeah, I'm just going to, I think, sit and knit for a while. Actually, I have to go back to work too, but let's just ignore that for a second. Um, I will be back with a regular podcast episode on the weekend. So until then, thank you so much for watching. Happy knitting, happy crocheting, and I will see you very soon. Bye.